a bit harrowing but it's in all right I'm gonna take the slowest way home possible okay so uh, successfully got it home from the freight terminal we got in there so now I have to figure out how to get it out It's on wheels. Oh my God. One down, a couple more heavy things to go. Okay, this thing really kicked my butt today. The hard part now will be erecting this column. You know, even though it's very big, it's taking up a whole space here, it's pretty compact. And there was a nail right there and I was just burning into it. Didn't even see it. So this nail chewed up my bit. So I'll keep working and I gotta do the other side. I took a lot more effort than was necessary. But we now have a pocket here. And here, and we only need about an inch and a half. And you see there's plenty of ledge. Plenty of ledge there. So now I'm gonna put this clamp on. Now, we're gonna lift it again, except this time we're using pulleys, and pulleys are amazing because pulleys use the multiplication of distance in order to do the same amount of work. Like, energy is completely conserved, 
and I think this is probably about 500 pounds, maybe 600 pounds. I don't know what the ratio is. It's probably 10, 20 to one. So as I rotate this one inch, it only would move this about, let's say a 10th of an inch or a 20th of an inch, depending on what the pulley ratio is. Uh, as a result, we end up doing a lot of work for not that much effort. It, but what it does do is it takes a lot of time. Just to move this a few inches it takes me like a minute or two as I sit here and move this thing. So, so watch, watch physics in action here as we get this going. So I used these screwdrivers to align it. I just dropped them in and I kept shifting as you saw and this is what helped get it in. No major magic here. Just everything is just muscling things into place. I guess what you would call like the main carriage. This is, this is the lifting platform and it will have arms that extend here and here. And then there are arms in the back that come out. So this needs, this whole flange needs to go on there. To get it mobile, I need to install this. The instructions aren't great, but they're not terrible. This thing's really freaking heavy. Um, this uh, pellet jack ram is not very sophisticated. It's just kind of resting in here. I suppose most of them are like that. There's a little ball bearing that you put in. It's about you know, that big. It's a maybe half inch ball bearing. It sits in the top. And then you've got this like locking pin. It's a threaded six millimeter socket. And then you put in these bushings here. Just kind of loosely fits between these and that's it. I mean, that's, that's it with that whole thing. This thing's covered in oil. Of course, that's Okay, as the instructions say, mount the hydraulic pump. Easier said than done. So they have a little uh, 90 degree elbow fitting here. This end is a flare, this connects up to the hose, and then this one goes into the block, the distribution block of the pump. When you hook up the line, don't make the same mistake that I did and uh, route it the wrong direction. In this case, I'm facing the back of the column. This goes out the left hole because the fitting I'm gonna connect to is on the left side. This is a straightforward connection. You just take the cap off it that was on there and then thread this on. It's a flare fitting. Now I think all I have to do is put in fluid here. 
theoretically I could plug this in and run it. 12 quarts of non-detergent, non-foaming hydraulic oil, SA10 or AW32 or equivalent. So I went to Napa and I got some AW32 transfer pump thing. This is going to take forever. I filled it to just under the max mark. Now let's see what this thing can do. I recently had some 20 amp receptacles put in. 115 volts, 60 hertz, 20 amps. It's a 3450 RPM motor, 2.5 horsepower. Okay, the drawing had it wrong. It shows these guys on the inside. They're actually on the outside. So, if you look in there, see how that's supposed to work. Little set screws here. What if I push it out of the way? Now I can rotate. So again, push it out of the way, you can rotate where you want. It's got to stop on this side. You've got about 30 degrees. So I can't find any pictures where the spring is visible. So apparently the spring is in there. And it's got a snap ring groove and it came with a snap ring kind of loosely placed on it. So what I think happens is you come in from the bottom, you can actually, you can fit this spring through the bottom hole here. And then I got to put the snap ring on it. So if you don't have snap ring pliers, Get some. Get some. <laughs> today I went to metal supermarkets and I bought some two by three tubing. It's quarter inch wall. So it's quite beefy, and I got some DOM tubing here. The two inch outer diameter isn't quite perfect. It doesn't quite fit in there. Basically be like this. It'll be a two by three beam here with the three inch uh, dimension vertical. So we'll have the strongest moment of inertia in that direction. It'll be cut at an angle. There'll be an underpiece that's cut at an angle. The total depth of this will be about six inches. There'll be tubing on either end of this that will drop into the holes on each of the arms. And this will be on the front and the back of the lift so that uh, this will catch the front. The other will catch the back. I'll be able to access drive shaft and transmission in the middle. I will not be doing the welding because I don't trust my welding. So I'll have somebody else do it, but I might just cut the pieces and get it all ready for them. Total length here will be 42 inches. Total depth here will be about 6 inches. The tubing itself is quarter inch wall thickness as well. Uh, that'll be part 2 of the lift build video. You know, I wanted to lift the car at the end of this video, and I'm sorry I wasn't able to. It's just, sometimes you got to solve problems. So, thanks for watching. This is David Hill with Solve Fix Build. Have a great one. Hey, you're awesome. You really hung in there, didn't you? If you want to see the next project, go ahead and subscribe and hit the notifications button. Hey, if you want to see any other types of projects, say so in the comments. I'd love to hear your feedback. And if you want to support the channel, it's super easy and it's free. Just hit that like button. The YouTube algorithm likes that. Thanks for watching. Stay rad and go start your next project.